All right, everybody, it's Friday morning. I just got the lights turned on, and we're going to talk about my native tank here for a little while. I'm getting kind of frustrated with it. I'm not really sure what I want to do with it anymore. Um, you can see I'm down to very few minnows left swimming around. I had so many of them in there not long ago that I thought it was overstocked, and now I'm down to just a few. I'm not sure what's killing them off. I don't know if they're killing each other off. I don't know if it's the Mayan cichlid that's just aggressive with them because of territoriality. But I do know that this Mayan cichlid has got to go. Uh, I did have a big crayfish that was living in that cave right there, and I was really surprised it was living within the territory of the Mayan cichlid. One of my viewers even pointed that out as well. And this morning I look in here and I can see a great big old dead crayfish in the back. It's missing its legs. It's missing its claws. So that's probably the crayfish that was once upon a time hiding in this cave in here. It probably either ventured out or got sucked out of its cave by that Mayan cichlid. And it's now dead. The Mayan cichlid, of course, is hiding down here. Like I said, it's just the lights just came on just a couple minutes ago. So you can see all this debris and everything all kicked up. It's because everybody went into the early morning panic when the lights came on. I have also got, you can see that little crayfish sticking his head out there. But I've also got that crayfish that's dead and it's turning pink. So it's obviously been dead for several days and I didn't notice it until this morning. So that's got to come out of there. And it's probably going to be all gross and stinky. This green sunfish is getting much bigger and he's going to be a problem so he's got to come out of the tank and then if we look down here we can actually see a few crayfish that are still sort of hanging on and surviving down here at the end of the tank where the uh, Mayan cichlid seldom ventures. So what I'm thinking about with this tank is abandoning the idea of a native tank there i've said it publicly i've been trying not to even think those thoughts because i really want this to be a native tank and i've really wanted it to be a native tank since i set it up but it's just it's honestly it's not working out the way i wanted it and it's not providing me with what i wanted if that makes any sense so let me back up by saying what my original goal for setting this tank up was and what i intended to do with this tank I had a 40 breeder a few years ago. It's currently my gudgeon tank sitting right over here. And in this tank I had, it was kind of like a little play tank. It was a native tank in the sense that I used it in the same way that a 10 year old kid might keep a bucket and would just go down the stream and catch some stuff and keep it in the bucket for a few hours and then let it go and then catch some other stuff and, you know, and just play with it and have fun. And that's what I did with that other tank, and it had sunfish in it, and I had bass in it, but it was never a serious tank. It never stayed one way more than a few days. I was much, much, much less experienced at keeping fish, and it was just a lot of fun for me at the time. It got me a lot of views on it when my channel was very uh, far from popular. Uh, that tank actually seemed to be popular and in fact one of my most popular videos that's actually driven a lot of people to my channel was one of the feeding videos of feeding my bass in that tank. I had a largemouth bass in that tank and that feeding video is pretty popular at least compared to most of my other videos. It's got 150 or 160,000 views on it now. So I kind of thought I could recapitulate that. I could set up a cool tank. It would get lots of views. It would be fun and interesting. It would be, you know, exciting and aggressive. And, and as I started sort of putting that together, I kind of found out that I'm not really into that. And I certainly found out that my viewing audience, by and large, is not really into that either. So this idea of having a native tank is becoming more and more problematic because as I found out the other day, even these little creek chubs try to eat each other, you know, setting up a tropical aquarium that's a community tank is a piece of cake by comparison of trying to set up a community native tank. Just by nature of these fish, they are aggressive fish that live in a kill or be killed world. So I don't really, you know, other than having some really minor fish in here some small minnows some little stuff that lives on the bottom and hides in caves of course if i did that i'd have to do away with having the crayfish 
Um, you know, so all of that, just, it wouldn't be the same tank. It's not what I would be interested in. What I wanted to do, the way I wanted to set this tank up, my goals and ideas and, you know, my dreams for it, basically, that my encyclopedia is not having anything to do with that sunfish being in his territory. I just wanted a little slice of my outdoors in my basement here. You know, I was out fishing yesterday, and I was walking in the stream, and I had to kind of chuckle. I, I looked down, and I saw a dead crayfish lying in the stream, and I said, well, I guess it isn't, you know, it's not too far different than, you know, being out in the nature versus being in my basement and looking at my tank. But what I've grown up around is sunfish and bass and perch and minnows and crayfish. And, you know, for me, this tank was just going to be my plaything. It was going to be my bringing the outdoors in, you know, I like playing in the stream, I like fishing, I like kayaking, I like just walking in the stream and hiking along the side of the river, and and this was just going to be a little slice of that. So my options at this point are to purchase fish to go in this tank. There are companies out there that sell native fish that you can buy to stock up your ponds, or, you know, if you've got a native aquarium and you want to stock that up too, that's fine. But I'm running out of time at the end of the year. They don't ship in the winter, so I'd almost have to wait till next spring at this point. I also don't have the money to spend on the, the, the cost it would cost me to buy even a few of these fish, you know, 12, 15 bucks a piece in some of these websites, and those are the cheaper ones, you know. And then, of course, the other option is I would be buying fish that might be able to be compatible. But it wouldn't be what I intended. It wouldn't be the tank I imagined, you know, with my fish in it, the stuff I see on a regular basis. I could probably get away with putting a few of this, that, and the other thing in here. But when I looked at it, they might be North American natives, or they might even be natives to my home state here in Maryland. But they're not native to my experience. You know, the, the fish I was looking at that I could buy in there, there were some really beautiful sunfish that were more docile and less aggressive. I've never seen those fish in my life. They just would have been interesting looking fish in this tank. You know, they might be North American natives, but it's not a fish I'll ever catch or I'll ever see. You know, the stuff I see are these green sunfish. I see bluegills a lot. Um, you know, so if I were to set the tank up the way I would like it to be set up, it turns out to not be the tank I want it to be. It's an aggressive tank that i got to keep putting you know, minnows in there all the time because they get eaten and gobbled up and it's a high maintenance tank with all of the, you know, dead animals in there and water changes constantly and so it's really just kind of not turning out the way I wanted it to. The one problem I'm running into, for me anyway, this it's, it's more of like an ethical problem, is the only reason this tank even exists is through the generosity of several of my viewers. I ran a GoFundMe campaign last autumn. This tank was on sale for Black Friday, and I wanted to get it at the price that it was available. Otherwise, I would have had to save up twice as much money to afford the same tank and stand combo. So several of my viewers made uh, small but generous contributions, and then one of my viewers, who wished to remain anonymous, um, privately sent me basically the, the amount of money it cost me to get the tank and stand set up and then the money that the other viewers had given me was what I used to cover the cost of the, getting the filter and everything set up. So I've put the work into this tank but other people put the money into this tank and they didn't put the money into this tank for me to simply buy a fish tank. They put the money into this tank because I was going to set up a native fish tank. And I just feel like if I change this from a native tank to something else, you know, it's the equivalent of me saying, thanks for the money, suckers. Now I'm going to make the tank the way I want to make it. And it's, you know, I know that's not my motivation. I know that's not how this played out at all. But it's still, if I was on the other end of it, I might be thinking, well, wait a minute. You know, I didn't give you money to set up a XYZ tank. I gave you money because I wanted you to see this native tank, you know. So, I'm, you know, for me, that's a little bit of an ethical issue. I would really feel bad uh, doing that and switching this up. But I just feel like I'm out of options. I don't know what to do with this tank other than sort of just kind of leave it the way it is. Because I'm not unhappy with it the way it is now. It's just not what I expected. Getting that Mayan cichlid out of there is going to be 
um, a big step towards making this tank closer to what I want it, but I still think I'm going to run into these other issues. I've been thinking about this and thinking about this and thinking about this, and I just don't know where to go with this tank. So the other thing that is now throwing a monkey wrench into this whole business is the tank we were just looking at here. I have this gudgeon who is apparently hiding in this tank somewhere and it needs a fairly large tank. I think this 40 gallon tank is probably about the smallest tank I could keep it in but I kind of need a bigger tank. I have a figure 8 puffer as well. My little butter bean here is definitely getting too big for this tank and it's as much for this kind of fish. These are very intelligent fish, so the size of the tank is not so much the room it needs, but it just it's like you being kept in a little 5x9 closet. It's sensory deprivation. It's just a tiny little tank for a fairly intelligent fish to be sort of cooped up in all day. There's not much to do, not much to explore, not much to look at. Um, you can see he's right in that top corner. Every time I come in the room, he's just right there watching me. He usually splashes around and makes a lot of noise to try to get my attention. Um, of course, he's doing that because he wants food. But he also could be bored. He could also just be desperate for attention. He's in this tiny little tank. So this is where it sort of starts. I need to move him. I need to get this puffer out of this tank and somewhere else. The only tank I have available that I could even think about altering or switching over to a brackish environment would be my gudgeon tank. So my original goal was to take the gudgeon out of this gudgeon tank. I don't know where he is. I've already seen him once this morning. There he is. He's just hanging out in the corner there. Um, my goal was I was considering just swapping tanks, putting this gudgeon in that little 20-gallon tank. And if I did that, my reasoning being was that, look at him, he just sort of sits there. He doesn't move, he doesn't swim around, he's just an ambush predator, he finds a spot to hang out, and then he just lays there. He doesn't do much of anything. This is not really an exciting fish. It's not really one I recommend to people. Uh, in fact, I will be shooting a video about this fish one day. He's going to end up on my fish I'll never buy again list. Great fish, it's just really boring, and it doesn't do a lot. So I thought... You know, he'll be fine just sitting in a 20-gallon tank. It's no big deal. But at the same time, the more I'm looking at it and the more I'm thinking about it, he is a big fish. He does swim around. He does like caves to hide in. And if you actually look that fish up and look at its tank parameters and what it needs for its water conditions, etc., um, it recommends like a 4-foot tank that's 12 inches deep and 12 inches tall. I mean, that's almost a 55-gallon tank is what they're recommending for this fish. So I don't have it in a four foot long tank it's only three feet long but it is 18 inches deep and it's about 20 inches uh, tall so volume wise there's plenty of water in there space wise I think there's plenty of water in there for this fish but I don't think it would work going into the 20 so that leaves me still stuck with something to do with butter bean Last night, however, I got the brilliant idea of what if I take this gudgeon out of this tank and instead of putting it in the 20, let's put the gudgeon in this tank. I can then put Butterbean in the gudgeon's tank, so Butterbean would get his 40-gallon tank. I would have the purple-spotted gudgeon in this tank, and since the purple-spotted gudgeon can only be with tank mates that are larger than itself because it'll swallow them whole. You know, this being a 125 gallon tank, I could put some significant fish in here and rebuild some new sort of community in this tank. I might even be able to get some plants established in there and grow some plants and just completely revamp this tank. I like the decor. I like the way it's set up, even though it is sort of set up to mimic my natural environment around here. Uh, this doesn't look that out of place if you went out hiking with me or out of Pretty Boy Reservoir or out on the kayak with me or whatever. You would see lots of rocks that look like that. You'd see lots of wood that looks like that. And, you know, I don't know if the gudgeon would look right in there, but it's just something I can do. This is an idea that popped into my head last night. Again, I'm just sort of spitballing here. I feel like I'm at my wit's end with this native tank. I come down here morning after morning and I always have to scoop dead fish and dead crayfish out every day. Um, that Mayan cichlid just terrorizes the tank, but I don't think the Mayan cichlid is 
my sole problem. I think he contributes to the problem, and the Maya encyclopedia presents its own particular sets of problems. But even without that Maya encyclopedia in here, I'm still going to run into the problem of what do I stock this tank up with? If I stock it up with the native fish that I was thinking, bass, sunfish, perch, you know, the stuff I see on a regular basis, we're back to where we started. We've got the violent, aggressive tank. I'm going to have to continually put new feeder fish in here which means i'm going to constantly be bringing new fish in that could potentially be infected i'm not you know i'm not going to go through the whole process of quarantining fish every day that i bring home from the stream to put in here as you know feeder fish i'm certainly not going to go to the pet store and buy feeder fish to put in this tank all the time so i just don't know what to do um i'd certainly be interested in anybody else's opinions and forgive me if i've forgotten who's who but if you are one of those people that donated money uh, to help get this tank established, feel free to give me your opinion. Your opinion holds way more value uh, than anybody else's in this discussion. Believe me, as far as I'm concerned, your opinion holds more value than mine. Uh, because, you know, just because this tank is in my basement, I still feel like it was paid for by other people. And therefore, your opinion is going to have a lot more to say about it than mine. So, hit me up. Shout me out. Say something down in the comment sections. Let me know what you think. Throw your two cents my way. Um, I always read everybody's comments and suggestions. What I do with them is a different story. But, you know, I learn a lot from my viewers. I get a lot of good suggestions from my viewers. And even if your suggestion isn't taken literally, it might be enough to get me thinking in a different direction that leads me to some sort of solution. So never be shy about posting your comments or asking questions or whatever. I do my best to get back to everybody. Um, as my channel does get more and more popular, though, and I get more and more comments, it's getting more and more difficult to respond to everybody. I'm not getting all my comments that I used to get, and so on and so forth. So I'll still do my best. You are still certainly welcome to and encouraged to leave your comments or thoughts below. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. So thanks for watching this one. Don't forget, for now, this one is still my native tank. And we'll just see how things play out here in the near future. Thanks for watching. Hope I didn't bore you too much. See you real soon in the next one.